country or what? Just whatever. I talk to every I talk to you every couple of years, and and it's it's always in your location. But I think I recognize this spot. Yeah, no, I've been here almost ten years now. Um, I don't move around very much. I've lived in three three houses pretty much my adult life. I only I only talk to you every ten years. Right. Yeah, it's been a while. How long? Young? Every video I've seen of you, you look like you're a hundred. Now you're back to forty. What happened? You go back into your house, you turn into a young man again. <laughs> I look like I'm forty. Yeah, I can't believe how young you look right now. All the yeah, videos yeah. I've seen of you, you look like you look like uh, Zeus. Uh, now you I, look just like a, a a little like a cherub again. Oh uh, yeah, I did a, this crazy uh, uh, fasting uh, weight cut from. <clears throat> Alexi Boboda match to this recent match that I had last week. I, I crazily went to uh, tried to make a two. Well, I actually did make two hundred nine, but so I lost almost thirty pounds. So that probably has a lot to do with it. Yeah, that's nuts. I was I was I was, I was watching that interview of you sitting on the couch with that guy talking about it. Uh oh yeah, Ray Ray uh, Coach Ray yeah. Where did you go wrestle? Can tell me that whole. St- By the way, hi, good to see you. Thanks for doing this. Uh huh. Yeah, no worries. I think I had two phone numbers in your um uh, in, in I think somehow in my phone I had too many phone numbers for you. So okay. when I was texting you, they weren't going through. Oh, okay. And then Travis was like, "Hey, he maybe he doesn't like you anymore." I'm like, "Dude, <laughs> <laughs> like, shut up! Yeah. He loves me. I love him. What are you talking about?" So uh, are you still doing uh, the kind of the the fitness? The I'm just doing this podcast, dude, and raising my kids. That's it. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, what, what's your focus on the podcast still pretty much with CrossFit or healthy, you know, this workout guys, crazy guys that are doing crazy fitness things. Yeah. I mean, I, I would, I'd, I'd like to have other people on here. I, I had a, you know, um, porn stars, businessman, politician, flat earther, scientist. I'd like to expand my. Right. <laughs> Do the full Joe Rogan thing. Right. Yeah. But occasionally. Yeah. But exactly. It, a little uh, Joe Rogan with a little Howard Stern, a little, a little, <clears throat> a little a little mix so cool. um to, uh god i don't i don't even remember what what year it was did pulling john come out in 2004 6 boy you would know better than i i i thought the filming was probably maybe the early 2000s but yeah i don't know when it actually came out did it come out that yeah i guess it did come out so the the footage was probably what late 90s to early 2000s because it was five yeah. six, really five six years between the footage and the and actual actual movie coming out. yeah okay so let, let's let's just for a sake let's say it's somewhere between 15 and 20 years yeah. and then the climax is us going to poland right and at, you were 209 then right right i weigh 209 yeah and and then you were with the uh, those monsters, Travis, Alexi. What was the other big guy's name uh, from Colorado? Uh, Mike? Uh, Matt Gardner. Matt Gardner. Damn, how did I forget that? Matt Gardner. And then, uh, and, and you guys wrestle, and it, and it's it's kind of absurd uh, be, because you you meet Alexi in the overalls, right? Yeah, yeah. We we were different weight classes, so we uh, you know at the time they had an what they call an overall. So they take the champions or whoever many people want to basically participate in the overall after the tournament to see who the, the top, you know, top dogs are throughout, you know, uh, no matter what the weight class. So yeah, I didn't pull them until the overalls. And then you had that crazy match with, uh, with taught us, right? Paris of Yeah. He was also in the overall. So yeah, there was, there was a bunch of tough guys to navigate before, um, worked on Alexi or tried to do anything with Alexi. And, and, and in that match with um with Tadas, it went probably as as bad as it can go for a match you won. He kept completely pulled you over and basically yeah. you had to just completely bring him back. Yeah, completely. Right? Yeah. He t- took my hand, he top rolled me and so I had to uh, arm wrestle at a very awkward position and um yeah um yeah it was uh, it was ugly but um I was successful at doing it. Uh but yeah and then, whose harebrained idea was it for you, fifteen or twenty years later, to oh. wrestle Alexi again? How did that happen? Um, I don't know. I, I, Alexi, I, do it. Decided, I think it was more Alexi's doing than my doing. I never, we never really searched him out. I, he he decided to make a comeback to the sport. Um, he made a little comeback about I don't know five six years ago and pulled Tim Bresnan. I don't know if you saw that. 
I didn't. I didn't. That was something that Igor, you know, uh, set up. But <coughs> I think Alexi's kind of a busy man. He's been um, doing a lot of things outside of arm wrestling, but uh, things have calmed down a little bit. So I think he just decided that um, he's always been kind of a, a you know, very uh, obviously a very athletic and strength oriented guy. So um, I, I think it was just fitting that he finally decided he wanted to make a real strong. Um, come back after I, I guess it's been 18 years since we last pulled that's what I was told uh, but um, yeah so it was more his doing saying that he wanted to come back and you know um, what what would be more fitting than to to you know give me a shot I've been arm wrestling now since I don't know about two years now two and a half years so I made my comeback and um, I, I was you know a good challenge you know formidable but yet vulnerable to to still possibly getting beat. I was maybe winning 80% of my matches. So, um, yeah. Uh, Ingen, I think, initially lined it up, and then we ended up going over to Dubai and doing it with the uh, king of the table. Um, so so here's here's here, here's where he is. This is how big he was the first time you pulled him. He, yeah. I'm guessing he was closer to 300 than 250 when you met him. I'm thinking 265, 270. I, I don't know exactly what he weighed, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to say two, maybe 270 um, versus when we pull. I think he weighed in at 245-ish, 250. So still fairly good size individual. He, he, he definitely put some... Uh, some meat on the bone from when he was completely out of the sport. You know, he had, he had gotten, I think close to probably more 220, 225, uh, uh, while he was out, out of the sport completely, but, um, yeah, not as big as he was 18 years ago, but still a, a formidable, uh, strong human being. A two, two time Olympian, I think judo and bobsledding. Oh, I, I never heard about the judo. I didn't know yeah. that. about J it. Judo, judo first, I think. And then, um, bobsledding. Hurt his no. knee judo or something. Okay. Yeah, no, he is just still in just incredible, incredible shape. I mean, um, all around, just not arm wrestling shape, just an all around, just agile athlete. I mean, could probably do anything that he wanted to do, but. And um, uh, Travis told me you had no chance. That's what people were giving me, pretty much no chance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of people were giving me no chance. Um, yeah, I saw some polls too. The polls weren't in your favor. Yeah, even though I was doing okay, um, having some decent matches against, I would say, top tier guys, top twenty guys. Uh, you know, a little bit of success, a little bit of uh, occasional missteps. Uh, but you know, the footage that he was putting out there, he was doing you know typical crazy you know strength arm wrestling related lifts. So um, based on that, I think people kind of gave me no chance. Like he's just, he's back and he's uh, strong as ever. And um, you know, but uh, yeah. And I, it was kind of, kind of played in my head too. Like, okay, here we go again. I'm getting myself into something a little bit way over my head. And uh, but once I got there and looked at him and we kind of hung out a little bit and, you know, just, I just got more and more confident as I was, you know, as, as, I, as I was there, I thought, well, if not now, then never. I mean, so like I can't, you know, can't be hesitant. I just gotta, you know, go go full bore. I mean, it's best shape as I can be in at this point in my life, and uh, to see where it goes. And luckily enough, it it went a little bit to my side of the table, and um, I was able to hang on and uh, you know secure the victory. So I'm gonna ask you a question that you're not gonna like. Okay. W was it easy? uh no i mean it could have went either way you know how arm wrestling is i mean arm wrestling you made it look easy no yeah, one arm wrestling, arm wrestling is um, a matter of just just micro you know starts and and timing and refereeing and all these things people think oh that doesn't matter that doesn't matter but it, it could look easy and then you could get beat the next match i mean that's how that's how that match went it was like um if the start was a little bit better for him uh and it's just a little bit hair more on his side. Um, even though he did get to jump on me in the first match, um, it, it makes makes all the difference in the world. So what seemingly looks like I'm in total control and it is easy is like just borderline could easily have gone the other way. If it was easy, would you would you tell us? 
Yeah. I mean, you can see on my face and the way I approached it that that everything had to be perfect for it to, to go that way. And it, it and it's still if it was super easy, I would have controlled the match when I tried to hook him. Like, I think the third or fourth, I think it was the fourth match I tried to hook him. And he he uh, even though I was close to still beating him in the hook, um, he still out, out muscled me. And so he was stronger. Uh, so, yeah, no, you, you can tell by that 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 it, it wasn't I wasn't in total control. Things could have definitely gone wrong easily gone wrong when when you pull someone like that or, or let's say like w- when you go down to 209 you you would never get under a bar a back squat bar and the person's like hey i'm not going to tell you how much this weighs right. but we're going to pull this lever and the weight's going to sit on your shoulder and you're going to have to squat it right and if it's 1800 pounds you're dead right i i, I don't do you ever have that fear that you go up there like against like what like uh, if you go against like a Siplinkoff or uh, yes, like yeah. no, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like that scenario. If you, yeah. if you do maximum stop, your arm he's just gonna snap your arm off. No, no, no. Like uh, uh, unlike, unlike your scenario of, of having a building fall on you. I mean, I I, I still kind of know in the back of my mind how strong somebody can possibly be. I've been around long enough to know that the very, very best, the very strongest are still manageable. It's not going to be like, you know, complete destruction. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, you know, I have that that in the back of my mind that, you know, I can still, you know, manage it. I mean, it, it, the worst case scenario is it just takes you badly out of position and your arm goes down. You know, I'm, I've, I've never been one of those guys that can mentally overcome what my physical abilities are. And, you know, and those kind of guys end up hurting themselves, breaking their own arms. But um, so I, 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 even though I occasionally think that way occasionally because I've gotten older and I'm thinking, okay, is, is this going to be the time that I've, you know, I, I push it and um, end up hurting myself because I'm, you know, getting older, but um, I've been, a, I've been able to, you know, escape that so far. So. What's the giant guy's name? Uh, Le- Levon? Levon Stagnosphilia. He's from Georgia. Georgia oh, guy. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. Even, with, even with him, as strong as he is, um, the most difficult part about him is just his, his, his enormous size. It's like trying to arm muscle a, you know, a tree trunk. I mean, you just can't really get a hold of him to really exert your full pressure. So, you know, pulling someone like that um, – I mean, until you can get you strong enough where you can have some type of control to really exert full pressure, um, he's going to beat you and it's really not going to seem like you put that much effort into it because he just takes you so badly out of position. <laughs> and here he's pulling Hermes Gasparini. He's probably got one of the best uh, Travis uh, Badgett style top roles in the uh, in the business right now and um, kind of effective. He was able to, you know, the back pressure definitely negates a lot of that cupping strength that uh Levon has but he's he's by far probably the best um as far as cupping strength goes and size to be able to control uh back pressure but this was a good match well there's there's no fear you 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 get up there there's not like okay this I'm I'm this guy's so much stronger than me that I need to be ready to catch and not attack um yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you you, you want to always have control of the match and put yourself in the best angles and the best position. Um, when you're up against someone like Levon, it's really difficult to do because he's normally dictating the match. But yes, I mean, I, I guess, you know, Hermes has put himself in some pretty awkward position. He's he's way out leveraged. He's in a, in a horrible position and he's still not mentally giving up and he's, he's, he's going to try to fight through it. And this is a dangerous, you know, the way he's pulling is very definitely very dangerous that he could uh, <laughs> he could end up tearing something or or uh, but still I, I always go back to you break your own arm you have to mentally be strong enough to do it to yourself it's not it's not you know the other person that's going to um, overwhelm you with some type of a jolt that's going to make you know, make the difference if you're still if you're still mentally clear and aware of what's going on. You, you know, you should be able to hopefully get that signal that, oh, that's that's more than I, my body can handle. And for me, it's always been, you know, even if I'm mentally saying, hang on, hang on as hard as I can, my arm still um, 
typically the tendons will just give way and, and my arm will open up. I'm, 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 maybe my bone structure and my frame is over the years has developed to the point where that's never going to be a risk. But um, yeah, luckily enough for me, my attachment points seem to be stronger than my, my ability to statically hold some of those, some of those angles. Um, John, you said that uh, you made a comeback two and a half years ago. About two and a half, three years ago, yeah. Now it seems like just yesterday, but it's been almost a couple of years plus years. What were you doing? How long did you take off? I stopped after my match uh, in Las Vegas against uh, Devin Lorette um, in 2015. Um, shoulder was just getting to the point where it was just aggravating me enough where I couldn't really practice. Um, just the inflammation, the arthritis. Uh, that I just decided, eh, I'm just done. I just can't really put a full effort into it and I can't train the way I used to train. And um, so I, I gave it up. And uh, yeah, five, six years later, I decided I'm just going to fight through it and manage it the best I can and um, continue to, to compete at the, the level that I possibly can at, you know, with my situation. So and it's been fun. I'm glad I did it. It's, it's, um, it's been fun. I mean, it's my family. I, I, I could, can't, can't stay away from family too long, right? And then you start missing people. It's like, I know thousands of people through arm wrestling. So um, it was really difficult to be away um, and not be competitive. And when, and when you say ma manage it, you're talking about the shoulder. Just shoulder, yeah. Well, I, I have to manage a lot of different things now. It's mainly the shoulder is still the limiting thing that really keeps me from pulling the way I used to and being able to apply the side pressure that I used to. Um, shoulder is such a key component for keeping your elbow tight to your torso. And that, that separation there is, um, is, is it, you know, it, have that is, is key to being successful at arm wrestling. Um, but yeah, and I have all the little aches and pains of finger, the finger joints, the, the wrist joints, now the hand, um, the elbow is the, uh, you know, just typical, you know, inflammation, arthritis, whatever you want to call it for age related issues that I try to deal with. And, and, um, overcome as best I can. I mean, there's no, is there anyone from your, from you started when you were 18? Yeah, I broke my arm when I was 13. So I'd, I'd already been really kind of arm wrestling in my early mid teens, but not professionally until I was 18, 17, 18 years old. Any of those guys still around? No, no, no. I, I started, you know, back in the early eighties, I was pretty young. There wasn't too many guys that I was competing against that were, as young as I was. So most of the guys that I knew in that era are, are long gone. And, and is, is Cobra still arm wrestling at all? At all? He still uh, dabbles in the sport. Um, uh, with somewhat fair, fair amount of success. I mean, he's still going to beat 90% of the walking around public, but uh, when he starts going up against, you know, competitors in his weight class, his weight class is super tough though. Those, those fly weights are, are incredibly strong and, they're, and it's so deep. There's, there's probably, you know, I was, I was going to say thousands of guys, but probably hundreds of guys that are, are just animals at that weight. At that I, I was weight. just thinking in terms of someone, the, 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 cause I mean, he was around in the nineties, right? Nineties. Yeah. Maybe even the late eighties. It's hard. I, but I'm I, trying to think of anyone from the old footage that I've seen who I still see now is Kevin still arm wrestling at all? No, he doesn't arm wrestle anymore. Oh, you know, Ron Bass still arm wrestles. Crazy. He, He's a year or two older than I am, and he has fairly – he's fairly successful at it still. So and, it's and, possible. I mean, Todd Hutchins, who's currently world champion, just beat the best – one of the best – the best guy at 105 kilos um, is only, you know, two years younger. But, of course, he started in his, you know, late 30s, early 40s. So he doesn't have quite the wear and tear. But that really shouldn't matter. I mean, we're talking about, you know – typical age issues of, um, you know, the arthritis and that, but yeah, some people, so I think some people are lucky as, in that respect and some people aren't as far as, um, you know, what they have to deal with when they get older. It's, it's crazy. The, the, uh, the work Todd's put in, did he keep rest? Has he been wrestling just since? I, yeah, no, he's, he's definitely, uh, he, he, there's definitely no lack of effort from Todd Hutchins. I think he's, um, in, uh, for me, I've, I've attempted to do some of the things that he claims to do, and <clears throat> I break down really quickly. <laughs> so it's not for everybody. But I mean, his training regiment, regiment is yeah, intense. Like if, I, if I try to do his training, and, and people will say, oh, you just need to keep fighting through, fighting through. 
baloney. You know, when you're on a trajectory <laughs> like this and getting worse and worse and worse to the point where you're almost being a, a crippled, well, when it when it's a turnaround, you know. So um what he's able to do is is unique, I think, to to his maybe nutrition, his genetics. I don't know. Um I mean, you know, there's a few people that are out there that are like that. Devin's like that right now, just seemingly like seeming like he just can't overtrain. I mean, the more he trains, the stronger he's he's getting and he's he's healthy and he's not feeling the you know the aches and pains and the negatives from it. So uh, but yeah, Todd t- Todd definitely puts in a lot of work. Now, but he's his body's able to handle it. Um I, I was look I was looking at I'm gonna pull up this clip of you and Devin. This is from <laughs> funny is uh, this Gary filmed this, but you can see me in the background here. Um, this is I remember this. I remember filming this. All right, Shahilis. Yeah, that's right. Shahil. Wow, good memory, John. How do you remember that stuff? And that's me holding up the camera in the background. And then on the right is Devin Lorette. And then you're on the left. And I remember when you were facing this guy, this was the first time I had seen Devin, but I had heard all these rumors of this guy who was just insane. Right. Canada. Right. So this was ni- this was 1999, 2021. <clears throat> really that that early. Because I, I, I met Devin and pulled with Devin a little bit. I think right and left in uh, the worlds in Japan in 99. So if this is... This was only yeah. a year later. I, I knew of Devin. So, yeah, I, I, we already kind of. And, and Marcio was there, too. Do you remember that? Marcio, yeah. Um, and a couple other decent pullers. Um, I think there was like an eight-man class or six-man class. I can't remember what. I think it was eight-man class. And I think he either – I think he had had a war with Marcio, right? He Yeah, he drew Marcio first. And I think I pulled the other uh, – champion from canada and i can't remember what his name was i think luke was it luke rumor rumor luke i can't remember that name sounds familiar but i can't remember so anyway yeah they kind of want to separate us they didn't want the americans pulling the americans and the canadians pulling the canadians the first round so yeah he ended up pulling marcio and then i think i got him the second and there wasn't that many rounds i mean there wasn't that many people in the class it was kind of like a uh you know who's who round robin type of a, a setup and when we started filming Pulling John, I want to say maybe you were 40 or, or late 30s, and you were talking about retiring. At that time, I had, at that time my shoulder wasn't bothering me. It was my elbow. I had just yeah. tendonitis in the inner elbow. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I think Armisen just was kind of at a low point. Um, it, it, Armisen kind of has gone through cycles, right? You know, big, big, big promoters have come out and, you know, have these big tournaments and uh, – They'll give it a go, and then a few years later, they they're, they disappear, and it's it's failed, and there's been kind of a, a lull. Um, and I think at, at that time, that was what what the case was. I can't remember who was promoting big at the time, but it kind of it kind of faded to uh, faded out. And I just was like, okay, yeah, maybe this is a good time to maybe you know slow down and stop doing it. And then I'll, I got the call from you guys, and um, kind of prompted me back into the into hanging into the sport. On the go here, could you share with us for a group that knows nothing about arm wrestling, but but is able to understand human movement and the important importance of it, it the what you're doing, what maybe like what muscles you're engaging, the actual directions you're pulling, what you're doing with your fingers as, as we start here. So I think I think this is built or no, who's the who's that? That's a great arm wrestler there, the ref too. What was his name? Oh, that, uh, that's um, the little black guy. He was amazing. <laughs> um dave hicks right yes 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 dave. <laughs> but yeah so arm wrestling is is mainly hand and forearm i mean all arm wrestlers are going to have huge forearms because hand control is so important in the sport um here not so much but you still have to have that cupping ability to to force this match into what we call a, a hook and inside wrist. Did he for, did he force that or did you? I think I, I think I forced it. I think this is the second match that we're looking at. Um, where the first time I ended up pronating outwards and then taking the leverage advantage <clears throat> outside and doing what like what we call a top roll. But here again, the, it comes. What's the most important is the hand strength to be able to lock down this this cupping. And then from that point, if you can secure that, then rotating this way puts and opens, you know, it opens your opponent's hand and puts them at a huge leverage advantage. So um, arm wrestling isn't so much, um, you know, 
bicep. You're not doing a lot of pulling this way. There is a little bit of back pressure, but um, it's more the hand strength, being able to lock it down, and then that rotation. So that pronation is 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 super super key to be super effective uh, in taking your opponent's arm to the side. But it, it's, it's really not illustrated in this match. This match is, this match is about shoulder strength and, and pec and, and keeping that elbow tight to your torso and, and, and dragging more sideways. But here again, it's not so much arm. It's hand and wrist to maintain that position. And then it's lat, shoulder, back, um, keeping that elbow tight to the torso and then basically just, you know, rocking your, your body sideways to to open your opponent's bicep. So when he says go, are you not attacking? You're just trying to get hold a static position? You're just trying to basically be like, hey, you're not coming through here? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I've got to definitely, I've got the upper ground here because I've got the advantage. His hand is turned underneath, mine's on top. Um, he, would, he would require a lot more shoulder commitment and side pressure to get my hand to be more upright. Uh, when you say your hands yeah. on top, you mean because your knuckles are pointed up? Yeah, now we're now we're fairly even. I think at this point that you're showing, we're we're pretty close to even, but um, we're just kind of waiting each other out. I I never I didn't realize how how good Devin's endurance was until after this match, um, and I felt like oh I was I was dominant enough to to maybe make this match last to the end where he basically quits, which wasn't the case at all, but. Uh, you let him get into you know, position there, right? I mean, he turns get, around. Yeah, you make little surges, and if it doesn't go all the way to the pad, if you don't break down that tendon connection and, and they and they basically open up and break, uh, then you have to reassess and then come back up to center and compose yourself. And um, by applying full offensive pressure all the time, it, it saps a lot of energy out of you. It's like it's like doing a, a, a curl a curls in the gym. If you're actually moving the weight. It's a lot more energy than just statically holding on to the weight. And it's the same with, you know, it, it, it applies to arm wrestling. By holding on in a defensive position, you definitely can conserve energy, especially if your opponent is actually trying to um, exert a little bit extra to, to offensively move you. And, and then, John, in about six seconds, you try to come out of the hook. Is that what I'm seeing? Can you explain that to people? Like, so you're in this position. I'm guessing you don't like it because he's got. It looks like he's getting. Yeah, some well, I'm just changing, I'm changing up the muscles. So I'm going from a from a, a shoulder tricep back. You know, going to the side two, turning into a reverse curl pronation, um, applying pressure on on his fingers to see how how strong his forearm and hand, and see if they're blown up yet, where I can attack. And here you go. Here I go with the attacking the fingers by putting back pressure so completely different direction wasn't effective so i ended up turning back into into the hook but it gave my arm a little bit of a a little bit of a break from the you know the having to maintain the side pressure then i turned back into into holding sideways and and, and you look up at him why are you looking up at him to just assess his just, fatigue just to assess, to judge, to see how, you know, how much he's uh, exerting, um, see if I can get any, any kind of clue like he's about ready to give up or not. And um, <laughs> that, that definitely was not the case with Devin. Um, and I learned that, you know, like I said, after this match and years later, I realized that the, you know, try to outlast Devin is not the, the proper approach. You need to be a very aggressive and, and hit, hit off the go, get rid of him quick. But yeah, that's a smaller version of Devin. You know, he he's definitely gotten way bigger, way stronger throughout the years, so um, wouldn't be if nearly as effective. God, twenty years ago, and and you pulled him a couple years ago, or a year ago. Yeah, um, six months or a year into my comeback. Um, yeah, we did a a, a rematch. Yeah, because I think when I left the sport, he was probably the last guy that I that I beat in two thousand fifteen. It was at the WAL event in Las Vegas. And, and and how much was he? And he was huge then. Um, he's you know when we pulled at the WAL, we made, we made one made, right here. Holy yeah, shit! Yeah, I'm big. I'm I'm 245, 250. Biggest I've ever been in my life is, is right here in this in this photo. So you were going for it? Yeah, I was going for it. I was like, I you know, I hadn't really had a lot of you know, a lot of time to really get the tendon super hard, but I definitely you know, you know. 
shed the gloves and said, okay, I'm going to get as, as, as heavy and as big and as strong as I can possibly get for this match. And he's, he's probably 20, 30 pounds heavier than me, but, um, yeah, we, I, I made it close. I made it as far as weight goes. Oh, and but he's, he's, he was way stronger. Yeah, no, he's, um, I blew up way too, too quick, too easy. Um, I, I had a little bit of a chance on the first match, good surge close to the pad. We struggled for probably 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe even for the setup on the first match, which typically doesn't go well for uh, Devin's opponents. Um, but um, yeah, no, I was happy with my performance. Um, you know, can't win them all, but um, I felt like at least I was in the fight with him. And uh, yeah, so here I got him, got him close, just couldn't quite surge it. Maybe I should have thrown a little bit of a shoulder roll to try to press it the rest of the way, but. Um, it's not something that I typically practice. Um, I'm not very good at it, so I elected to just try to stay outside. Do you think that's the best person you've ever arm wrestled right there, that Devin Lorette 2000? Um, yeah, the current Devin Lorette is is definitely uh, the, the strongest arm wrestler that I've ever arm – most complete arm wrestler that I've ever arm wrestled and, and probably strongest. Um, maybe not the most explosive, uh, which he's never going to uh, you know, achieve that with, with training. He is who he is, but um, yeah, he's he's definitely uh, um, developed into one of the very best, if not the best, arm wrestler that's ever that's ever walked this planet. Yeah, isn't that Levon, Levon is the only not the other guy? But I've never I've never hooked up with him, so I've never arm wrestled him, so I can't really say uh, say where Levon's at. But yeah, Devin for sure. And, and he and he beat Devin handedly, right? He did, and it's almost a year, year and a half ago, so ago. Um, but here again, arm wrestling. It looks like it looks looked like it was easy for Levon, but it could have easily gone the other way. I mean, Devin, I think hurt his arm after the first match, at the beginning of the second match. Um, so it pretty much made it look really easy. But uh, you know, if Devin hadn't hurt himself and he was able to somewhat stick it like Ermies did at the very bottom there, that that match could have turned completely different. Devin could have came out victorious even that day. So um, what seemingly looked easy for Levon and, and controllable for Levon could have easily not, you know, made it to the finish line. Is there talk about those two getting back together again? Oh, I think so, yeah. I mean, Devin's pretty much beaten everybody and proven that he's – He's the next in line to take a shot at Levon again. So, um, and I think he will continue to do that until he gets a shot again. Um, I don't know if you're into the sport that much, but um, Levon ended up hurting his wrist uh, six months ago, a year ago or so. So, um, since their match, he's ended up having an injury, which we all have to to uh, you know figure out. Um, so we'll, we'll see how strong he comes back after that. Um, yeah, so I, I sus expect them to probably pull within in the next year again. It is a kind of a trippy sport in the fact that um, the, the people who drive it are people who are passionate about it, like people like Ingen Terzi. Yeah. And, and that's why it has those cycles. There may be some ruling body, but the real pushes have been people like um, – uh, what was the guy from Poland? Um Igor Mezarenko. Igor Ingen, just these promoters that come in. The, I don't know the guy's name, but the guy who was doing the wall, um, WAL. It's just – Yeah. The, you, you know, I mean, before that, UConn Jack, the UAL with the, uh, Robert Drank. I mean, right. so there's – I mean, there's a dozen promoters that have come and gone and have, have – have attempted to make a you know a run at the sport and make it popular enough where big sponsors might come and they could continue to build on that. But I think this the situation now is a little different with East versus West. Um, it's 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 being supported by arm wrestlers and arm wrestling fans. So I think this is the first time um, that that it's self sustaining based on oh, cool. wow in, interest right of of just of. It's not just some, it's not a rich and I'm not poo-pooing this at all, but it's not some rich guy who's like, hey, yeah, I want not some rich guy that's investing a ton of money hoping to recoup it at some point and you right. know and realizes a couple three years later, like, oh, this is this is draining me and it's not really going like I expected. It's not it's not progressing like it, it should progress. This situation now is it's it's self-sustaining. So um as long as as long as we don't lose our audience and the participants that are are, are excited, this one might be a long term. 
what's crazy is how um the community's niche it's small um but it's ravenous so like when you go live on your youtube it's crazy the numbers you get or the numbers travis gets or the number this arm arm wrestling whisperer gets it's it's the the people are hungry um for content and they show up in hordes and they're they're crazy committed you guys have a crazy committed audience yeah no it's it's, it's, it's a little different than i even imagine myself that you know I'm, I'm used to what was the sport 10 15 20 years ago and it it really has changed dramatically uh the audience is is changed tremendously whether it's because of the ease of access to youtube or, or what but um it definitely it definitely uh has a, a much broader deeper bigger audience i mean i i always get a kick i occasionally even now get people that recognize me just on the street like ah oh, hey you're, you're the <laughs> artist. Like, yeah yeah <laughs> you know so it's Dude, crazy to me john uh, a friend of mine was showing me that like the crossfit games this year it's a big spectacle right and the total views for all the crossfit games events was eight million and then okay. someone showed me, and then someone showed me this video of marble racing and it was just someone who lines up marbles right and races them. right right and it had 14 million views. This one marble racing video had more views than the well, entire. Everybody game. plays. Everybody plays marbles. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the thing. I mean, only the elite elite do CrossFit. You know, or there's some of the crazy sports that we do. But something like this, a kids game. You know, everybody's everybody's excited and, and going to view that. Like the marble league. <laughs> crazy. It's not, it's not surprising to me, but yeah. Well, even like video games. How many? How many? millions and millions and millions of people will participate in the in the video game thing massive um when you say the crowd you're shocked to see the crowd what are you what are you referencing like more girls than boys or a younger no, group or it's still mainly a guy's thing i think um i mean the girls that are involved in the sport are normally girlfriends of guys that are the arm wrestlers, right? Um, right. There, there's there's exceptions, of, of course, but I'd say probably 90, 95% of the audience is still male. It's not, you know. What, what do you see that's different? What do you see? Younger? Like when you say you, you look at the audience and you see it's different, is it? Well, not even so much the audience. I just think uh, when I say audience, I mean people – at, at home on their on their on their easy chair or on the, uh, you know watching it on the internet on youtube or, or what have you um uh, so yeah it's it's i i don't know where they're coming from or why they're coming but they're obviously there those event remember when we would go to um north lake tahoe for those events mm -hmm. and and there was kind of that crowd there like the kenny hughes and right. tom right. and you yeah, and, do those events still happen uh I think Leonard and Nice still do uh, events throughout the country, small events like that, but I haven't participated in one now for, you know, seven, eight, nine years. So, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure they, they still exist and they need to exist, right? They, that's the right, grassroots, right. you know. And, and when you, you don't participate in, in them because you're trained, and do you do any tournaments or you only do one on one matches? If the difference for people, just so you know, tournaments, what you think it is, it's double elimination. Right. Everyone goes into a pile, it's in weight classes, and everyone works their way up to the top of the pyramid. But what John's been doing is these hey, you show up to the arm wrestling table, and you it's like it's like a boxing match. You, you fight a match, and then you get what's the rest? How much rest do you guys get? Uh, two minutes, I think, is East versus West. Oh, wow, that's not much. Okay, you get two minutes, and it's best out of five, right? Right. Do you do any more of the uh, double elimination? There just hasn't been the the matches haven't been there. No one's promoting it that way anymore, um, except in, in in the small you know amateur style format. Uh, uh, yeah, it, but if somebody were to have a big big tournament like that with big prize money, I think you would see a lot of the great arm wrestlers uh, show up to try to try to win that thing but um it just hasn't been available um the, the 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 promoters have gone with the super match format to make it more of a a show for so the best guys in the sport beginners used to be able to put their hands on the best guys in the sport so you would show up to tahoe and there'd be a guy and he might get you in the first round and he can say hey i arm wrestle john brzink those days are over those days are pretty much over they've been over for you know a while now yeah interesting yeah. Wow. When is the last time you did a double elimination tournament? Do you know? Uh, 
it probably was the WAL without they were still using that format um, when I pulled Devin um, in 2015. It was a uh, bracketed uh, tournament. Damn. And I heard they're coming back, so maybe the WAL will be the, the league that brings uh, that format back to the the sport. You heard the double WAL is coming back. I've heard I've heard rumblings that yes, they're making they're making a, an attempt to to bring it back to the United States because it gets a little taxing to travel all the way to Turkey every <laughs> yeah 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 every yeah. other month. Um, is that have you gone several times in a year? Uh, I've been to Turkey maybe eight times, seven eight times, yeah, in the last couple of years. So it's been almost every two three months. Always to arm wrestle, never to commentate. It's always arm wrestling. I went. I went the one time to commentate uh, when Devin pulled uh, Levon. Oh, so you got to see that? Are you I'm excited? Not, not Devin and Levon. Uh, Devin and um, Hermes Gasparini. I'm sorry, I didn't get to see the Devin and, and Levon match. Do, do you like doing that? Did you like going out there and watching him? Well, you know me. I'm. I mean, I always enjoy the arm wrestling. I would have liked to have been. Uh, stage side and 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 you know with a, a good clear live view but uh, once i got there i ended up going into this uh hot booth and and commentating watching a uh, a tv screen so it wasn't as as enjoyable as it, it could have been but it was still worth it for me to be there are, are you still at delta i am no shit i know really what else am i gonna do yeah, i don't i retire i don't know play with your great you have great yeah. I've thought about it, you know. Um, so yeah, I think about retirement a, a lot lately. Uh, I just need to to really have some idea w what I'm going to do with my time. Um, yeah, I did. I took the four. I took four months off uh, voluntarily when COVID went on, and I was able to find stuff to do, and I enjoyed it. So um, I shouldn't be that scared of it. But I'm, I'm still, you know, still five years away from you know, Medicare. So there was always that. And, you know, there's other, a lot of things to consider as far as, as, as far as completely leaving something that I've done for the last 40 years. So it's always a little scary. You're so, pra you're so practical. You always <laughs> yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what it's going to take to push me out the door, but I'm, I'm hoping it's going to happen soon. So I sort, um, same, same routine, get up in the morning, drive, park in the parking lot, walk over to the plains. Groundhog day every day. Five days a week, Monday through Friday. Yep, pretty much it. And what do you do with the planes again, John? What's your I'm a, I'm a mechanic, so um, I just basically keep them moving. They come in, and my it's my job to make sure they leave happy and safe. Um, uh, you just graduated from aircraft mechanical school. You go to your first day of work at Delta Airlines. A man approaches you. He extends his hand to give you a handshake and says, "Hello, I'm John Brzezink. I'm your manager." <laughs> where did you find this caleb this is awesome this is a reddit thread i literally just looked looked up john brzink delta airlines and this was the first thing that popped up yeah. must be a real moment that probably a few men have experienced or imagine your first day at prison and dave chafee's your prison guard <laughs> maybe a prison guard he is oh my god that's amazing uh did john freeze yeah i think he did he got stuck in one position about to sip his coffee. Oh, that's awesome. So, 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 so John, so that basically everything, every, anything to keep from the, from the windows to the engines. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we try not to do too much heavy maintenance throughout the day because the most important thing is getting the airplane and it out on time. Uh, so yeah, normally it's a, like little things, little trim pieces, uh, seat belts that need to be you know dealt with or you know whatever. But we do our, our safety walk around when the airplane arrives, make sure that um, you know there hasn't been any weird things happening throughout the flight, uh, you know leaks and burst strikes, and you know make sure the tires and brakes are good and the landing was was a good landing. And <laughs> you know, what's the have you seen anything where you're like, ooh, I'm good thing I caught that. That would have been really bad. Yeah. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Anything, anything you want to share? No, I mean, you know, the the big ones have been, um, you know, bird strikes, you know, but occasionally mechanical things happen. And um, yeah, it could be a problem, but it's, 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 you know, there's a lot of holes that have to line up in the cheese for it to be a, a real 
major problem with the you know the airline industry. It's it's as you know probably one of the safest things that anybody can do. So it's it, it would take a lot, but um, yeah. And and we're so critical. Even the the tiniest little things uh, you know, get treated like it's going to be the end of the world. So so um, uh, t- land landing tires on the landing gear. Like if there if there's any question, the tire gets changed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have limits. So there, everything's spelled out in a book. I mean, everything is um, pretty much defined what can and can't go. So, and it's, it's that way for everything on the airplane. Um, and if, how often, if there's a new plane, do you go away for a month to like plane school and like, you have to learn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, recently I just was spent three weeks in Atlanta um, getting trained on the, the new Airbus 350 that we're, we, we have, and we're getting uh, supposedly getting more of even though it hasn't come to Phoenix yet, I'm, I'm, I'm fully trained on it already. So, Oh yeah. Delta. That was the airline where the guy in Atlanta, where the guy pooped on the aisle and they had to turn the plane around. Did you hear about that, John? <laughs> I did not hear about that. <laughs> this, this flight I think was taking off from Atlanta to s- somewhere overseas. It was going to have a flight attendant that told me he had to sit down because they were landing. He's like, no, I really have to go. No, sir. You're going to have to sit down. It's like, <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, this dude. This dude was making uh, diarrhea all the way through the airplane. Wow. Okay. Well, you got it. Yes. The guy. The guy was running from his seat to the front of the plane oh, and left the trail. Yeah. What do you do? Well, so they they turned the plane around. Yeah. Well, it's kind of a, kind of a big deal, right? It's a little biohazard. That's what they called it—a biohazard. <laughs> biohazard. <laughs> Uh, some scented candles and incense just can't cover it up. I don't think you could be. No, right. you no, I don't know what would be. Wor- I, is that is that worse than somebody actually getting sick? I've I've been on airplanes before when uh, people have spent a little bit too much time in the at the bar, being afraid of the flying, and 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 have, have lost it. And uh, that's that's another a bad flight. I I was I was landing once coming back from I don't know where. It was an international flight. I want to say it was India or China. And I was, and I was sitting, I was by myself. And as the plane, I, the whole plane I'd had flight, I'd had this crazy fever, crazy, crazy fever. And mm-hmm. I was like shivering. I, I was sick. And right as the plane was, you know, making its like final 20 minute approach, I realized, oh, I'm going to throw up. Mm-hmm. So I have the barf bag and the kids in front of me, there's four kids in front of me and they know I'm going to throw up and mm-hmm. they're making barf sounds to fuck with me. Oh. <laughs> the whole tw- and eventually I vomited in the bag and felt like tr- like a trigger a chain reaction the whole aircraft could be you know reminds me of the going into a theater with the uh, the old I think Mighty Python movie I can't remember which which one it was but there was a scene in there where this the big monster guy was eating and eating and eating and then they, you know they were he was throwing up throwing up throwing up and uh, when I walked in, I, didn't, I had no idea that scene was, you know, in that movie, but walked in the theater thinking to myself, why does this theater smell like, you know, oh, vomit, but then realized during the movie, like, oh, some people have just could not handle that and lost it. It would trigger them. Wow. <laughs> oh, oh my you God. actually had it. You actually had it. Uh, so no, no need to watch it because. <laughs> <laughs> If you, you remember this movie or no, I don't remember this movie. Yeah, yeah. No, so that was, Did was, you see this? This was in the theater, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, I don't know, 20, 25 years. It might even be 30 years ago. I don't know when this came out, but yeah, I, I remember hearing this story um, many years ago. You told where a guy was parking a plane and uh, two wings hit. Oh, uh, yeah, we've had incursions like that. Um, yeah, poles, wings, trucks. Um, yeah, I mean, accidents happen. I mean, it's there's there's not you would think a complicated system like an airplane would have like a collision avoid, avoidance system on the ground, right? Like, no, you're too near. Hit the brakes. You know, so <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the type autopilot. Hit the brakes. Good. <laughs> right. But it doesn't. So, um, yeah. It, it would be it would be crazy unsettling, I would think. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you were to, it, it, it's like put it's like dropping a rock on your Bugatti. Yeah. No. Or worse. Or worse. Yeah. yeah it, it, it'd be tough, I think, sell to the the crews to to allow the airplane to have that much control over over what's going on too. So yeah, they they want to have the final say of, of when when to stop and how to stop. Um, you and um Travis came to my mom's house one time. 
And we were in my, the three of us were in my bedroom. Maybe there was someone else in there too. I can't remember. And we were, we had the monitors up. Right. The and we were doing the editing or the logging, or whatever, whatever you're doing. Yeah. We were doing the commenting. We, we had shot that, um, the arm wrestling championships, like on some boat in Kansas. And we brought oh, the footage right. back and we edited it to make an ESPN show. And then you and Travis and I were going to commentate it. Right. Okay. Yeah, no. So that was the uh, the nationals, right? That you're talking about, because we we've done a couple of editing things. Like uh, I think we did the a UAL one for ESPN, right? We may have done that one too. I I don't know if that one ever even aired. Yeah, I think it did. It didn't have the yeah, it didn't have the reruns like the uh, the one you're talking about did. But yeah, that one was crazy, right? Yeah. So so, uh, so okay. So uh, so maybe I'm conflating the two, but that's irrelevant. The the part that. You got you and Travis were sitting on the edge of my the bed. It was a big bedroom, and um, you guys started getting into like a little bit of a wrestling match. Right. <laughs> and I remember thinking, "Oh shit!" Like I I I'd, I'd never seen like two grown men like start doing that. <laughs> uh, and I was like panic. I don't know if you remember me. Like I was like, "No, stop, stop, you guys." Stop. You're gonna go through a wall. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. How? Uh, uh, how? How do you do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And I don't I don't know what what transpired to, to lead up to that, but um, probably you know th this from yes. the one side. <laughs> yes. it, was, it was just all in good fun. I mean, we we were just it was know. all in good fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were never. We were. We were oh, okay. It was just you know because I was I was like, holy shit, this is like th this could be not not that I thought it was like angry or fighting. But I was right. like, this could, this feels like it could quickly escalate in like a computer. Yeah, especially computer. in a small, small confined space like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Brainer Ponders getting tossed around definitely can go through drywall pretty easy. Yeah. Um, has, has the sport left Travis behind? Travis Bajan? <sighs> Travis, you know, he, no, um, Travis can make a comeback anytime he wants to. Um, his focus has just been on his son. I mean, I think he's been completely committed and, supporting Tyson with the, you know, the football. Um, so I, I think his, his focus just hasn't been on arm wrestling and maybe rightly so up until maybe the last year and a half, two years uh, really hasn't been a tremendous amount going on to really, you know, have that type of commitment um, in the sport. So, um, but I think he's going to make a comeback. I think uh, you do from a little bit that I've talked with him. He's, he acts like he's, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he's, secretly you know getting stronger and pulling on a regular basis and i know he's trained it you know um, a few times now so he's uh he's definitely in his head that he's he's going to be back and is there a left is the left-handed scene still big or is it big um maybe not as big as it once was uh but still there are left-handed matches to be to be made for sure and it, because that's where he would be his, his most potent right yeah, yeah for sure are, are you pulling with both hands I occasionally do. Left is still so fragile. I mean, it doesn't take much for me to cross that line and, and, and be injured for months uh, with the left. So I, I try to avoid pulling with it very often. But I occasionally will if the situation is is uh, light enough where I, I feel like I'm not going to, you know, hurt myself. I'll, I'll, I'll try to dabble in it just so it's not completely lopsided. But, yeah, I, I don't competitively arm wrestle with the left. It, it and I guess that's one of the things with the double elimination gone. If there was double elimination still, you could assess the crowd and be like, okay, I'm going to enter left. I'm, right. I'm in yeah, no, I would probably more to to, exactly to do it. I'm there anyway. I'm pulling right. There's a, a class and there's, there's a prize money to be had in the left. And I mean, even if it was a, a small chance, I would probably put myself, you know, in the, in the mix to, to, to take that chance. So, so a couple weeks ago, you flew to Turkey to pull 209 pounds, 209 pounds. Yeah. Um, so initially, well, long story, but anyway, uh, I want to hear about the weight loss and why you did it. <sighs> and, and when the last time you weighed 209, I think that'll be the part that's most 209 was prop. The last time I probably weighed 209 was when I pulled the legacy back <laughs> wow. 18 years or so ago. I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't, I haven't had really had the need to make 209 since the PAL. Um, and even back then it was not a, a huge struggle, but I was always walking around at 220. So it was always a little bit of a, a water cut for me to make 209. 
Um, yeah, no, it was just, a, I don't know, like just crazy personal challenge that I started, you know, started heading down that road. And at, at one point, three weeks in, four weeks in, I, I told myself, I'm just, just no way I'm going to be able to do it. I told Ingen, I said, I'm not going to be able to make the 209. Um, making the 209 was going to make it a, for the, the world title. The guy that I was pulling against was the 95 uh, kilogram champion. In the he was the world champion and Ingen's the promoter and he was setting up the match. Yeah, yeah. And and, and did he ask you to do it or were you like, hey Ingen, I can uh, drop down? The well, I had known that I was going to pull this guy five six weeks before um, I decided to lose to ninety five, um, and we agreed that uh, I could be a hundred kilos. So that was that was my and that was still going to be a challenge for me because <clears throat> I was probably 108, 109 kilos when I pulled Alexi. So um, and it was five weeks later, six weeks later, I think five weeks later. Um, so to even just lose to hundred kilos was <clears throat> going to be a little bit of a, uh, a challenge, but I started right away after I uh, got done arm wrestling. Alexi went on this, uh, super low calorie fasting diet of just basically eating hardly anything, nothing, you know, you especially eat? no carbs. I was completely carb free for the, you know, the, the, the five, six weeks. So just meat, just meat. Just, well, I was basically just, I'm like, that's where my cholesterol, when I went in for my physical, my cholesterol was crazy high. I was just basically eating scrambled eggs in the morning and then, you know, maybe a protein shake at, at night and that was it. So, uh, but yeah. And so, how, how long did you do that for, that diet, eggs and protein? Uh, the, pretty much the whole way up leading up uh, to the match. Um, a few days out, I was still... 216 217 so i had to lose you know seven eight pounds of you know water weight uh it, you know and that was not super easy either because i was already kind of depleted of the water because i wasn't eating any carb carbohydrates but uh yeah two weeks away from the tournament i decided i wasn't going to be able to do it i well i think it was three weeks away from the tournament i had pulled in uh, a practice in georgia and i could tell i was really uh depleted and fatigue quite easily um so i thought nah it's just not worth it i'm not gonna be able to do it but then a few days later i was like ah come on john you big sissy <laughs> so like i said it became just a kind of a personal challenge it was more important to me mentally i think to to even uh to to make the weight than to actually go in thinking that i could you know win so um yeah do I regret it? No. I mean, it was fun. It was a challenge, and I, I, I accomplished it. And um, you yeah. got on the scale naked? Uh, no, I still had a I had still had a jersey and shorts on. I I, mean, I think I took my shoes off, but um, yeah, no, I made it clear as could be. I probably was a pound or two less than than what I needed to be. And then, how soon after you weigh in do you get to your pool? And I'm not I'm not a great I'm not an expert on doing that, but. Um, I just started drinking a lot of uh, sugary water, um, apple juice, orange afterwards? juice. You mean when you got when, after the match? Completely afterwards. Um, I think breakfast that morning, I basically just ate bread because uh -huh. <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I wasn't, my stomach wasn't going to go haywire and I was going to be you know, having to run to the, you know, the outhouse to, you know, while, while my name was being called, you know, the day later. So, um, basically just just nothing but carbs so honey and and bread and, and 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 water and i didn't actually weigh myself the day of the match but i'm i'm guessing i probably gained you know back back up to two maybe two and a quarter 220 ish so wow wow yeah and, and then how was the match did you feel like you had energy or no didn't you did you um, feel like I, I, who was yeah, it i actually what I remember more than anything that was kind of a negative is not that I ran out of uh, gas, but I was mentally kind of in a fog. I almost felt faint after the first match. I was like, I was like a little dizzy, like, okay, make sure don't fall on stage. <laughs> don't pass yeah. out. Yeah. 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 So that was the biggest scare for me. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and our, yeah, our wrestling's a little different than, other sports that require, uh, I think that, that sugar, uh, store, um, that energy, you know, cause as you know, arm wrestling is more static and, and, and frame and tendons. So I was hoping that I could have enough strength to, you know, to, to overcome his lock 
to make it a quick match. Um, it wasn't the case. He was strong enough to stop me. Um, and then, then, then the, the factor comes in, well, well, how long can you hold your breath and, and hang on at that high level without, you know, feeling, feeling faint and tired. But, um, yeah, no. So it was, it, it is what it is. I'm, you know, I'm done with it. It's, it, it was a fun, fun challenge. I don't know if I'm going to think about pulling 95s again, but, uh, you know, you never know. The way I understand it is basically your mitochondria can use two types of fuel. It can use ketones or it can use glucose. Right. And your mitochondria is what's, what's, you know, uh, with some relationship with ATP is what allows us to be animated as human beings. Right. So we're not dead. And so I'm thinking like, if you're just eating eggs and protein shake, your body was burning ketones. You were, you were in what they call ketosis. I mean, I've never seen inside the human body. I'm just regurgitating just shit to you now. Right. But, but if you do start eating all that bread right before the event, then all those little in, billions of mitochondria or whatever are inside of you that were using ketones to, burnt to uh, you know you were a diesel engine and then the night before the show you switched to a gas powered engine right you kind of is that your understanding too of what you did that, that I, all of a sudden you're asking your well, mitochondria hey start burning glucose yeah, instead of I don't, know, I don't know how long that takes i mean i i'm no, trying I don't to know either, I guess. on carb loading like is is right. it maybe even beneficial to to deplete yourself of carbs fight like like doing a, a water overload to do a, a water cut um is it is oh, it something that is it something that you could deprive yourself, you know, from? And then two days before the event, because I weighed in on Friday morning and the, the event was not till Saturday night. So I have 36 hours, 40 plus hours to try to get myself back to a normal condition. Right. And, and, and I, and I, I'll tell you what, I, I mean, I had probably 30,000 calories of honey and bread and, you know, <laughs> between the, the point that I weighed in and, and the actual match. And, it still didn't seem to, you know, correct the the damage I had done. The you know, five weeks of being or six weeks of being in ketosis state. So, um, I don't know. I don't know the science behind that. Whether or not it's it's something that is is worthwhile or feasible to do, or it's just impossible. How old are you? I'm 59. And uh, do you have another match lined up? I am scheduled to arm wrestle uh, Krasimir Kostadino uh, in, uh, he's from Bulgaria, um, in January at East versus West, uh, January 20th. And when you say scheduled, you're flexible. Yeah, that's a set up match. Yeah, well, of course, it's all subject to change if he hurts himself or I hurt myself between now and then or or something happens where they, you know, we, we can't can't follow through with it, but um yeah, as of right now, that's that's my next super match. And uh, that and they're all televised on Core Sport. Core Sports, yep. How is that working? The couple times I've I've tr watched stuff on Core Sport, it's been it's been not been easy. I watched um, an arm wrestling match and a boxing match. Okay. Um, the system seems. I, I don't know. Yeah. It, well, the, the production it keeps getting better. Ingen has been looked great. The production looked great. I just mean like the, the wonkiness of getting on the website and like knowing where to go and giving them your money and then like getting. I, I, I've only done it a couple times because um, I've normally been there participating. Right. Uh, but my wife, who knows nothing about computers, seems to be able to do it pretty easy. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, right. It's definitely been a lot easier than some of the things we've had to deal with in the past. Uh, like the like the WAL the BR live that was a to me a, a seemingly a nightmare and and I wasn't re real real happy with the security that they had because it seemed like um, the one time I ended up using it my card maybe it was a coincidence but my card got compromised like <laughs> okay this is over. <laughs> so but um, yeah from I haven't really heard any negative on on the ability to to you know get the pay per view on Core Sports. I, you know, it's still probably a little difficult on TVs. Um, I know Renee had a hard time figuring it out, and I don't. I don't Maybe even know. That was it. Maybe that was it. I had to get it on my computer and then beam it over to my TV. Yeah, aired it to the TV, right? It's, so it's easy on the computer or on your cell phone, but um, I think the the app or the program that is required to make it work on these smart TVs is probably still a little bit, you know, ahead, ahead of its time. But, but I but I guess the participation and the um, 
is enough to is is positive because they keep doing it. Yeah, people people are actually purchasing it. Yeah. It's it's the amount of pay per views are are making it are allowing them to continue to to make the sport better and continue. Oh, that's awesome. So you the feedback you're hearing is is like, yeah, it's lucrative. Yeah, no, it's it, it's they're not running in the red. I mean, occasionally I think they do. I, there's been a couple that have have gotten close or have maybe slightly gone into the red, but um, I think the, uh, the the majority of them are in the plus side where there's a little bit of a kitty there to 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 sustain it. Yeah, that's awesome because I think people are more likely to do an impulse buy if they could just obviously just plop on the TV. Yeah, and push buy. Yeah. Well, I've always thought that too, but um, that were even a little easier to like the YouTube, right? Where you could just easily just do it through your PayPal or your Apple account or whatever. Right. It'd definitely be a little easier for people to be impulsive like that. But of course, it seems like it was pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy to be able to do it. So. Okay, good. Because I would say half the boxing matches I've bought, I've told myself, do not spend $79. And then it's like seven o'clock at night and I'm like, fuck right. it. Ah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. Especially if it's so easy, like it's an account that you don't really, it's like your you know, a, a fake play money account like PayPal or to me, some of those things, you know, accounts that I have Venmo or like, it's like, yeah, whatever. It's just, you know, it's money I'm not really counting on or. Easy, easy, easy purchase. Um, uh, your grand, your grandfather. My grandfather. Yeah. How, how many? uh two and two i have four grandkids and that's yeah three and, girls three girls one boy and do you do you like that oh yeah i've loved it yeah no it's 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 the best if you know i i don't i don't feel like i was ever the greatest dad for my own two kids but um i i find i have just tremendous amount of joy with the with the, the grandkids so yeah um yeah grandkids are the greatest what do you think that is? I see that with my dad too. My dad has endless energy for my kids. <laughs> <laughs> like, so when you, if they, know, if different mindset, I guess, if you've grown and in, into not being so worried about your own, you know, your own life and your own career and all the stresses and stuff that, that you're, that you're going through in your twenties and thirties with your own kids. Uh, yeah. It's just, just a completely different outlook. Um, yeah, I'm a completely different person with my the grandkids than I than I was with my own kids. Do, do you, if they come over, you just engage them right away? Um, man, maybe not so much engage them, but just just have that that feeling of joy. Just right. to even just sit back and just you know watch them and just enjoy them. You know, I don't have to engage to to to, to enjoy it. Um, Travis mentioned when when Travis mentioned to me something you said to him about um when you were at the Chicago game, and you were watching Tyson that you felt like that was your son. You were watching. Yeah, and isn't that a, isn't that a weird phenomenon? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm super excited for for him. And I, I mean, I've met Tyson a few times back in the early years, and um, but really haven't had any any contact with him but just knowing travis and how i guess it's knowing travis so well and, and knowing how excited that he must be and feel that it just creates that automatic you know excitement um i you know yeah it's i i i, I you know i used to be a bears fan i'm from the chicago area so when he got drafted by the bears it was actually extra exciting for me like oh my God, the bears <laughs> the bears finally have a decent quarterback i i thought to myself oh this will be great um but yeah no uh yeah super exciting um and i become a, a huge fan i i never would ever think about going to a, a live game I was just like oh i wouldn't anybody go but um, the, the little bit of exposure and I've, uh, experience I've had to be able to, to, to watch and play, um, I, I'm hooked. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm going to spend all my allowance money on going to live games now. <laughs> um, after I went to the game in in San Diego, uh, Los Angeles, and okay. then and then I get back the next day. I'm talking to Travis, and he's like, "Yeah, so John didn't want to leave his seat." I go, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> John was at the game. I'm like, well, "Shut the fuck up, John was." Oh, yeah. at the game. Yeah. He's like, yeah, dude, he was at the 50 yard line. Yeah, no, it was awesome. That's so <laughs> I'm like, dude, you didn't tell me I would have gone up and said hi to him, or I would have like he's like, dude, he was just completely 
in hog heaven. You, so you had an amazing seat, huh? Yeah, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. And Renee's not a huge football fan either. And she's like, I'm ready to go back. You know, <laughs> so it'll, never, it'll never be like that again. Cause oh, it, was, it was such a good experience. We, yeah, we had a blast. That stadium's awesome. And the game was awesome. Everything about it was awesome. So, yeah. So you, you, did you fly home that night? Uh, no, we spent the night. We, we spent the night at the, uh, Sheridan there near the airport. And then just, and then just buzzed out in, in the morning. morning. Yeah. On Delta. On Delta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In and out, in and out. Yeah. Today. Go ahead. No, it's today. He's they're playing in Detroit. I was, I was hoping that maybe he'd still play one more game because it's easy for me to fly to our hub. So Phoenix to Detroit, I had it all planned out. I'm going to leave in the morning and be able to <laughs> get on the evening flight back. But sounds like, uh, Justin is uh, is, is going to play today. So, John, um, you, you've you've had um, you've been in the limelight for a long time, and you have friends like Travis for a long time. And, do you have any thoughts on um, friendship and and um, the important to keeping friends and 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 forgiveness and longevity of friendships and acceptance and like what do you think has changed about you through the years, or do you have any insights into? the importance of friendships or, or keeping friends. And, and I bring that up specifically because of tr Travis, I know me, you and him, we, we've spent a lot of time together. You've obviously spent more time with him than me, but I spent a lot of time with you and a lot of time with him and there's ups and downs. And yeah, I mean, but, but I would say we're all very close on some level. Yeah. About this last night, they, you know, uh, you know I, I'm pretty much a, a, a family guy. My life has been pretty much uh, being a loner and introvert that I don't really seek out that friendship and, and and to be around other people when Renee's around, but like, she's been gone to watch the grandkids. Uh, my, my oldest has got tickets to the formula one in Las Vegas. So they were gone for a, an extended weekend. Um, I find myself sitting here alone without her. I'm like, what do I do? I mean, I didn't even really have anybody to go, you know, all my friends are, you know, from out of the state, you know, our wrestling friends. So, um, but yeah, no, I, you know, friends are definitely important. And when I'm around them, I enjoy it, but I don't, I don't normally, you know, seek that companionship out when I'm, when I have, you know, family around, we, we normally just do our own thing. How long have you been married? Oh boy. Good question. 30, 38 years coming up on 38 years. Does that seem right? I don't know that. <laughs> You're 59. 80, 85, 85, 80, 85. So, yeah, 24, 38 years. Yeah. My whole life. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Yeah, I've been married my whole life. <laughs> right. The chore, Chuck Norris answer, all of it. How many pushes can you do? All of them. <laughs> uh, what about that? So, so, so that's your friend. That that's that's your ultimate friendship then yeah, then the, yeah. the one with your with Renee. Yeah, it's, my, it's my comfort zone. It's, it's who who I'm most comfortable with, and that's really all I all I need. But um, yeah, even close friends sometimes are a little for me. Meant, can be taxing, can be draining, can be difficult. Yeah. I enjoy it, the experience, but it's not my it's not my calm place, I guess. And. and um... And, and, and the secret to the, or maybe secrets, not let me think of a better way to phrase it. So it's not so cheesy. When I think of my relationship with my wife, I think of it as kind of like one of the crowning achievements of my life. Mm -hmm. I've been married. I've been, I've been with her 38 years. Yeah. I, I, an achievement. No, it's not. It hasn't been work for me. I've, I've, it's. Not I, work, but that it's. You know, a lot of people can't fucking just keep a relationship. Yeah. Like that because of expectations you put on people. Yeah. No, and I, well, it, it, it's, it's not, it's never, it's hasn't been completely super easy, but as I've gotten older, it's become a lot easier. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I can't imagine my life without, you know, my relationship with her. So um, whether it's the, you know, our kids and the grandkids and the whole family thing, it just seems to have kind of all gelled. And it's like, it's, it is my life. It's everything. You know? Yeah. It's everything you're, you're yeah. like around. Yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, dude. Well, thanks for coming on. Great catching uh, up with you. Hey, appreciate you having me. Yeah. Uh, so okay. keep track of your. I, I should watch a few more of your podcasts to see. Hey, is, it, is it a weekly thing you do just on Sundays? Dude, on the- dude every morning, 7 a.m. Oh, you do them every single day. What every, a workaholic you are. Yeah, every single morning, 7 a.m. live show. Damn. Yeah. Well, good for you. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm having a blast. I'm, and I'm stoked that I, I've lived a life where I get to meet and know people like you. And I appreciate you coming on. All right. Next time I'm in the area, I'll try to try to look you up. Where are you? It's still up in. Uh, I'm in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz. Okay. I, I have a feeling we're going to run into each other sooner than later at a, at a football game. All right. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> I'm Chicago forward to it. Now too. All right, Simone. Oh, my mom says hi, John. She says, oh, hey, hey, hey. All right, brother. Uh, good seeing you. Good talking. Talk. Yep. All right. Take care, my friend. Bye. Bye. I found him on the internet. I contacted him, said, Hey, can I make a movie about you? I went over to his house. He's like, Are you fucking crazy? Don't make a movie about arm wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Now look at him. <clears throat> oh, Christine, why? Why? You probably don't want to tune in. Why, Christine? Why would you say such a uh, thing? Hello, Mr. Chapman. Oh, man, my back is fucked up. Really? Yeah. What'd you do? Such, such a bummer. Such do that 10-year workout? God. I, I've been, I, I seriously thought I was never going to have to do that. It's been years. It's been five or six years since it's been like this. I thought I was never going to have to go through this ever again because I'm so fucking smart. And I just. Fuck. fuck, fuck, fuck. What was it? The burpees or the running? It was a two hour drive in the car and then getting out. Ah. And, and I never work out in the morning because like, I really have to be warm. That's why I ride the assault bike so much. I, I have to be pouring sweat and completely warm before I start working out. Absolutely. Two hours in the car, 15 minute warm up, not enough. And I knew as I was warming up, I'm like, this doesn't feel right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He went to a gym. Exactly. Yep. I went to a CrossFit gym. Exactly. That's why it has to be completely at my own uh, pace. Fuck. But but I but I did good in the workout. I pushed through. I did good. Uh, I think you guys would have all been proud of me. I oh, saw pool boy pushing you. Yeah, it was a, it was a big it was a big class. I think we if it, I th- I I know if 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 I'd have been <clears throat> I mean I know if I would have been warmed up, um, we, me and him would have. There were a hundred people there. I bet you we would we would have won it. That was yeah. like the biggest Saturday morning class I've ever seen. It was cool. Yeah, it was crazy. It was wild. And everyone was close. It was what was crazy is how close we were to each other, but it still felt good. Yeah. Like I, I didn't feel crowded at all. No. It was a, it was a great group. All right. That was cool. That was a little weird for me. Um, uh, because I hadn't talked to John in forever. Really? How long? Yeah, probably I mean, normally I don't I don't know since the last time he's on the show, a couple of years, but prob normally I don't like to talk to people talk to people before they're on the show but i probably i should have talked to him i felt like there was too much insider stuff like if you don't arm wrestle maybe like half that shit went over your head that's when i when i saw him come on i was like i hope somebody will explain the top pressure the back pressure the like that stuff i should have someone on who can just explain all that uh i don't have any i'm out of peptides i'm out of peptides i'm all out of peptides hint tent. I'm all, out of, I'm all out of peptides. I'm all out of coffee too. I'm all out of peptides. <laughs> Caleb's out of coffee. I'm out of peptides. Man. You know what I did do though that I've never done when I have an injured back is I rolled it out with a tennis ball. And so actually last night I slept the whole night through without any like pain, which is crazy. Oh, why well, thank you. Oh, looks like Paulina's got me too. Oh shit, look at that. Yeah. Ask and you shall receive. Oh, Jake Chapman, I'm all out of chocolate dicks. I happen to have one. <laughs> right, right there. Um, couple things. Uh, don't forget about Friday, uh, Black Friday. It's the Friday before Thanksgiving. No, Friday after Thanksgiving. And um, 
you want to go over to Paper Street Coffee. It's three for one. It will be a very small window to get their new line of teas. Don't forget to go to Swolverine. Also, they're having a 30% off on Black Friday. Uh, BirthFit, I don't know if they're having a 30% off sale. My, uh, my, um, I don't, probably shouldn't. I was going to tell you, who, one of my friends just got, I was going to tell you exactly who it is. But one of my friends who is a uh, professional athlete just got a CJC 1295 and did a, a round of it. They, mm -hmm. they want more. <laughs> one of us. Yeah. One of us. Loved it. They absolutely loved it. A professional athlete, Sevon, is that legal? Fuck, I don't know. I'm just telling you. Professional athlete, I know. And they absolutely loved it. All right. Um, that's it. I'm going to go for a walk now. Uh, loosen my back up. I'm going to uh, pop a couple, I don't know, three Advil. And I'm going to roll in the tennis ball. And then I'm going to go for a long walk. And then I'm going to be gay this Friday. No, I'm going to watch the uh, Chicago Bears game at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Are you watching it? Yeah, I'll watch yeah. it for sure. I'll probably throw it up while I'm painting. At the Shattican? Yep. So you're not painting the ceiling? I don't think so. Somebody did send me some pictures. I think I said that. And I like it, but I don't think I'm ready to do it yet. To not paint it? Yeah, I don't want to paint it yet. I did put up two ceiling fans, though. And that wow. was terrifying wow do you do you um because you because you were afraid you were going to get electrocuted uh yes and i thought i was going to fall off the ladder and break my leg or something like when i saw that that ladder is there, is there a video coming out with it yeah when taylor sent that picture of him on the ladder i had already installed one fan and i was like damn i don't want to put on another i don't want to climb the ladder and do it again but then you sent that picture and i was like all right, I got to climb that ladder and put up the other one. That ladder was gnarly. Yeah, I have a better ladder than that, and I'm still scared. There's there's something I want to read to you. Paint the ceiling before you do it. Yeah, I know. I don't... I think that's a, that's a down-the-road thing. I had this great comeback on YouTube. Um, uh, damn, it was on the flat earther podcast. Oh, the comment. Yeah. There's some, there's some fucking, I just saw that today too. Are flat earthers assholes? Why are they all assholes? It's never like, like some guy, some guys like, Hey, I can tell that the guy in the CEO shirt on has a controller. He's so controlled. Damn. He just went off for like. Here we go. Yeah, I had a great comeback. Uh, your mom comeback. I wish I could find it. Here, let me go. Damn. Hey, that guy came on so fucking aggro. Like, I'm, I'm totally open to the earth being whatever shape he wants it to be. Yeah. I don't know so how he's going to... Uh, I found it. Is my comment there? I, I got a your mom comment. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Man, you can... Oh, thank you. I wanted to share this with you. I'm so proud of this. This is this morning. Man, you can see it on the CEO guy's face. The controller's got him. He loves that fake narrative. Open your eyes. Yep, we had him on the show because we wanted to test the control of our controllers. You nailed it. Now, how about you do another line of meth and look deeper into my eyes and see the reflection of your mom on these nuts? <laughs> thank you so proud of that i just he came out so hot he just started throwing comments down i can't believe people are still dude this one and the ufo one are just always giving yeah it's great their podcast that like people just keep going back to the well on same with the first dave castro one i did hey what's crazy too is like this dude like dude you hit all caps like what's going on with you Jim, <laughs> Jim reese dude i'm totally what are you talking about i'm totally open you're the one who has your controller on. You're the one who knows something. I don't know nothing. I'm dumb. Just call me dumb. Don't, you don't got to get like into the whole controller thing. 
I'm just dumb. That's a trip. <clears throat> all right, good to see John Brzezink. The shortest podcast of all time. You like that one, Bernie? The Flat Earther one? That guy was fucking hostile as shit. It's like, how about you just walk us through it? Like, you believe in something so much, like the flat earth or God or something, but you can't explain it calmly to someone? It's like, dude. Yeah, he was just it. automatically on the defensive. Yeah. How about give us a little tutorial? I still haven't, like, like, I... Like, the, you know, there's that camera you can get. You can go out and take a picture, and it'll show you that the horizon line's flat, or you can go on an airplane, or... I haven't, I haven't done any of the things... I'm, I'm, you have to take if if what he, I don't even know if you took his word for everything if you could um still know that the believe that the earth is flat but I'm open to it I'll try it when I fly out uh, what I'd really like to see is like someone go to like to go to so South America no Antarctica no the South Pole Wh wherever wherever the wall is that you have to cross like to see the other continents and shit probably Antarctica I think yeah, that's I want to see that. <laughs> uh, Jake Chapman, you're not awake enough yet. You're an idiot. You don't know it already. They've got you. I'm open to them having me too. I'm like open to it. Is that is that what I'm supposed to say if they got me? That I'm open to them having me. Uh, clock, none of them believe it. They're assholes because even though they're pretending they start taking the resistance personally, this happens to low rent trolls. Oh, oh, wow. I could see that. That was my favorite part. I'm not going to waste my time explaining it to your listeners. That's literally the reason you're on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He spent, he spent three hours talking about how he wasn't going to explain it to everybody who was asking questions. And you're an idiot if you don't get it. It's like, come yeah. on, bro. We already know we're idiots. That's why we're having you on. Enlighten me, please. Yes. I, and, I, and I mean that. Uh, uh, I've never loved Sebi more than right now. Uh, send me your, text me your phone. Text me your address. Maybe you'll get a Slack block in a couple of years. <laughs> My kitchen table is just piling up with Slack blocks. I wasn't going to give you a slack, slack, slack box. I was going to come over. You're so creepy, Sevy. I know. Like, I, ooh, that didn't feel good. Is that your back? No, that was this handle oh. slip because I was stretching my back. Azusa hated us hating on him. I thought they were complaining that Sousa had a go at him. I'm stretching my back. That guy, that guy said, um, that guy actually posted on Sousa's Instagram account and was saying shit along the lines like, um, I have to stand. He was saying shit along the lines of, uh, you're, you're basically Sousa, you're a pussy for coming after uh, Hibbler after he got off the podcast. Oh, man. Can I make this go? Maybe I'm, oh shit, should I start doing the podcast standing? This sure. week? I wonder if this handle goes up even more. Hmm. <sighs> Bye guys, thank you. See you tomorrow. Uh, is tw tomorrow's Monday. Monday. Oh, who's on the show tomorrow? Tommy G. Oh, that's going to be crazy. Oh, awesome. All right. Tommy G's yeah, been okay. on the show a few times. Tommy G, uh, if you want to, let me take you here really quick. Yeah. So tomorrow, let's go to Tommy G's. Uh, can we go to his YouTube channel? Tommy G. And... Uh, let's go to videos 
Uh, Inside Houston's death-defying street racing scene, America's uh, gangster ghost town, uh, Gary, Indiana, in- investigating the most Muslim place in America. Oh, shit. Awesome. The Booty Girls, Atlanta's a mask vigilantes. Wow. Latin Kings inside Chicago's gate. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Chicago's massive migrant crisis. Holy shit. This is going to be good. I'm going to watch all these uh, today. Sick. Wow. Look at this. White boys uh, in the hood with Ohio's sketchiest white boys. One million subscribers announcement. No shit. 1.1. Oh, my God. Tommy G. What a boss. Most people bail on this podcast as soon as they get that big. (laughs) all right that's cool god this guy is cool he was just in san francisco too all right so we got tommy tomorrow and then of course i'll ask him about real estate so if you're into invest he's big into investing in real estate so pick his brain there too what a cool dude he was just in san francisco i can't wait to see those videos all right yeah, congrats to Tommy G, right? That's cool. Christine Young, I love him. What do you mean? Why are you invisible? All right, guys. Thank you. Good to see you guys. Uh, Bernie Gannon, um, Seb on before Pedro scoops, you answer the rumor that CFL, Souza Palooza, Mom Matosian is leaving CEO for HWP. Before Pedro gives you answer the rumor that CrossFit. Oh, that Matt Souza and Rosemary Matosian are joining HWPO. Yeah. <laughs> there are, there are, there, I, I have been in talks with. HWPO to become their official podcast. They have recognized, they finally recognize me as the largest podcast in the space. And, uh, I think, I think it's cause Tyson's been coming on that now that they, they want to bring me into the family. Mm. So I appreciate you burning for leaking that you dickhead. Um, I'll be actually, uh, doing some skinny dipping with Matt and O'Keefe this, uh, upcoming weekend. That's how they bonded HWPO naked, uh, skinny dipping. There you go. You like that, Bernie? Is that good? QL release videos on the ready state. Q God, I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to even understand these posts. Sousa workout. Don't you have to be queer to join them? I don't I <clears throat> I don't know what you're talking about. But I wish I did. All right. Um there is there is some there's all sorts of stuff shaking behind the scenes, always fun stuff bubbling up to the top. Um Podcast is killing it. Thanks for you guys support. Can't wait to get my peptides. Did anyone get, hey, if anyone, if anyone, that was kind of controversial the other day when um, uh, we were talking about terzipatide, terzipatide. If anyone ends up getting that from California peptides, it's like $700 a bottle and wants to talk about it. Like, tell me after you use it for a few months. I'm curious. We talked about it for a long time. I'm curious if anyone bought it. This bottle right here. I'll see if I can pull it up. Uh, if it, they got all bunch of new peptides, California peptides, and this bottle down here, if anyone ends up doing this and they want to share their experience, I'd be really curious to hear it. Terzepatide. Any of these bottles. If anyone does any of these bottles and you want to share your experience, I'd be curious. DM me. I want to know. Look at this. Some of these are available on subscription. All 
All right. I know. Don't panic, anyone. I'll be fine. My back will be fine. Don't, don't, no, no, seriously. I'll be fine. 